Which of Earth's sleeping giants will awaken first? Could the next devastating earthquake strike the Pacific Northwest, rip through California, unravel beneath Japan, or explode off the eastern Philippines? In a year when some of the planet's largest seismic events have rattled distant arcs of the Pacific Ring of Fire, these four infamous faults have remained unnervingly still. What does that stillness mean? Are we witnessing the calm before an inevitable disaster, or is the stress redistributing in ways beyond human prediction? And if one of these megathrusts or strike-slip systems does rupture tomorrow, how much time will the world truly have to react? The year 2025 has already delivered a punishing catalogue of earthquakes. On the 29th of July, a magnitude 8.8 .8 quake ruptured off Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, sending shockwaves across the Pacific Basin. In March, Myanmar's Sargang Fault produced a deadly magnitude 7.7 .7 rupture that tore across more than 500 kilometres, far longer than many scientists had anticipated. Other top events included a magnitude 7.4 in Chile, another 7.4 near Kamchatka, a magnitude 7.3 south of Alaska, and a magnitude 7 in Tonga. Yet absent from the grim ledger of the year's top 20 are four of the most notorious seismic names, Cascadia, San Andreas, Nankai, and the Philippine Trench. That absence is not reassuring. It is ominous. Each of these systems is capable of a catastrophic magnitude 8 or 9. Earthquakes that would not simply shake buildings, but reshape coastlines and alter economies for decades. The question is not whether they will break. The question is, which one will break first? Along the northwest coast of the United States and Canada, the Cascadia subduction zone lies in tense quiet. This is the boundary where the Juan de Fuca plate plunges beneath the North American plate, a scar stretching nearly 700 miles or more than 1,100 kilometers from Northern California to British Columbia. Geological records drawn from drowned coastal forests and tsunami sand deposits tell a recurring story. Roughly every four to six centuries, Cascadia unleashes an earthquake approaching magnitude nine. The last such rupture struck in January of 1700, shaking the continent and generating a Pacific crossing tsunami recorded in Japanese coastal chronicles. Now, 325 years later, modern geodesy confirms the zone's shallow plate interface is tightly locked. Offshore GPS acoustic surveys detect virtually no slip at the sea floor, meaning the plates are stuck, grinding silently together without release. Deep beneath, episodic tremor and slow slip events flicker like faint signals, but they relieve almost none of the stress at the shallowest depths where the greatest danger lies. Recent studies in 2025 have sharpened the warning. Seafloor pressure sensors and long baseline acoustic ranging show that Cascadia's central and northern segments are accumulating strain at rates exceeding 20 millimetres per year, the equivalent of nearly an inch annually. Over three centuries, that translates into more than 20 feet, or roughly 7 metres, of potential slip stored along the fault. If that energy were to release in one rupture, the earthquake could reach magnitude 9.1 or greater. Computer models simulate the tsunami consequences, waves exceeding 90 feet or nearly 30 meters, crashing into parts of the Oregon and Washington coast within 15 to 20 minutes of rupture. Across the Pacific, Japan would again see the arrival of waves 10 hours later, a grim echo of the 1700 disaster. The United States Geological Survey maintains that there is roughly a 37% chance of a magnitude 9 in Cascadia within the next 50 years. That number is not universally agreed upon, but what matters is the broader truth. Cascadia is overdue, locked and bracing for an earthquake that could collapse infrastructure, isolate communities and claim tens of thousands of lives. California, by contrast, lives with a different kind of threat. The San Andreas Fault stretching more than 750 miles, or about 1,200 kilometers, slices through the state like a scar visible from space. It is the archetype of a strike-slip system where plates grind past one another laterally rather than diving beneath. But the southern section of the San Andreas has not ruptured since the late 17th century, around the year 1690. 
The central section broke last in 1906, devastating San Francisco. The northern section shook in 1989 with the Loma Prieta quake. This uneven record has created what seismologists call a seismic gap, particularly in Southern California, where more than three centuries of strain are thought to be locked and ready to snap. The amount of accumulated slip along the southern San Andreas is striking. At an average plate motion of two to three centimeters per year, the fault has stored the equivalent of 10 meters or more than 30 feet of potential offset since its last great rupture. When it does release, models suggest a magnitude 7.8 or greater, an event sometimes called the big one. Simulations from the Southern California Earthquake Center project shaking that last between two and four minutes far longer than the few seconds most Californians are used to. Infrastructure losses would be staggering. Aqueducts that carry water across the fault could rupture, leaving Los Angeles without supply. Gas pipelines could ignite wildfires. Highways and freeways that crisscross the fault line could collapse in multiple places, severing evacuation routes. What has unnerved scientists in 2025 is a re-evaluation prompted by the sargaing rupture in Myanmar. That earthquake, stretching more than 500 kilometers in a single event, demonstrated that faults once thought to rupture in segments could break far longer. For decades, the San Andreas has been modeled as separate segments, each with its own recurrence. But if the southern and central segments were to rupture together, the result would be far more destructive than previously imagined. Instead of two large quakes spaced years apart, California might endure one colossal earthquake spanning hundreds of kilometers, shattering cities from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Across the Pacific, Japan lives in the shadow of the Nankai Trough. This is the place where the Philippine Sea Plate subducts beneath the Eurasian Plate, a geologic engine that has produced some of the most powerful earthquakes in Japanese history. In 1707, the Hue earthquake struck at magnitude 8.6, causing widespread destruction and triggering a volcanic eruption of Mount Fuji. In 1854, a pair of quakes ruptured the trough in succession, one in December and another the following day, both exceeding magnitude 8. The 20th century brought another sequence in 1944 and 1946, each a massive megathrust event. Nearly 80 years have passed since then, placing the region squarely in its recurrence window. Japan's Earthquake Research Committee estimates a 70 to 80 percent chance of a great Nankai quake within the next three decades. Unlike Cascadia, Japan has one of the most sophisticated monitoring systems in the world. Its dense network of GPS stations records ground movement with millimeter precision. Submarine cables laid along the trough measure strain and temperature changes, while the DONET and SNET systems, vast arrays of undersea seismometers, provide real-time data from the ocean floor. Yet despite this arsenal of instruments, the shallowest part of the fault remains opaque. Slow slip events occur at depth, releasing small amounts of strain, but the seismogenic zone, the shallow interface capable of rupturing in a tsunami-generating earthquake, appears to be locked. The scientific consensus is that Nankai is poised for another great rupture, possibly in a sequence of paired events like those of the past. Simulations by Japan's cabinet office predict tsunami heights of more than 30 feet or 10 meters, inundating coastal cities within minutes. Death toll estimates in worst-case scenarios reach into the hundreds of thousands, with millions displaced. The nation prepares relentlessly, conducting drills and issuing probabilities, but the underlying uncertainty remains. Nankai could rupture tomorrow or decades from now, yet the window of danger is undeniably open. Farther south, beneath the waters east of the Philippines, lies a trench less famous than Cascadia, or Nankai, but no less menacing. The Philippine Trench runs offshore of the Visayas and Mindanao regions, where the Philippine Sea Plate subducts beneath the archipelago. Unlike Japan or California, the trench has not produced a recorded great earthquake in modern times. Its silence is unsettling precisely because the historical record is blank. After a magnitude 7.6 intraplate quake shook Mindanao in 2012, researchers began asking whether the trench interface itself might be locked.
Some evidence from marine sediment cores suggests that tsunami deposits are centuries old, pointing to a major event in the distant past. Others argue that the trench might be creeping slowly, releasing strain without violent rupture. But silence is not certainty. In 2025, new simulations from the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology modelled a hypothetical magnitude 8.7 rupture along the trench. The results were sobering. Tsunami waves, some rising 30 feet or more, would slam into eastern Mindanao and the Visayas in as little as 2 to 15 minutes. For many fishing villages that live directly on the shoreline, that is no warning at all. Unlike in Japan, where extensive early warning systems exist, the Philippines has far fewer offshore sensors. Even with satellite data and limited ocean buoys, the detection window is razor thin. The difference between life and death could be measured not in minutes, but in seconds. The trench's potential magnitude stems from its rate of subduction. Studies suggest the Philippine sea plate dives beneath the Philippine mobile belt at 10 to 15 millimeters per year. Over four centuries, this amounts to several meters of accumulated slip, enough to fuel a rupture capable of shaking at magnitude 8.5 or greater. But because the trench is poorly instrumented, uncertainty remains immense. Is it creeping silently, or is it straining toward catastrophe? In the language of seismology, the trench is a blind spot, and in blind spots the most dangerous surprises can occur. Taken together, these four giants, Cascadia, San Andreas, Nankai, and the Philippine Trench, illustrate the diversity of seismic threats. Cascadia and Nankai are megathrusts, where oceanic plates dive beneath continents, capable of lifting the seafloor and generating tsunamis that cross entire oceans. San Andreas is a strike-slip fault, with devastating lateral shaking but little tsunami risk. The Philippine Trench is a hybrid, a subduction system with global tsunami potential but limited monitoring. Each fault is shaped by different mechanics, but all are united by one law of plate tectonics. Strain accumulates as long as plates continue to move. The science of measuring that strain has advanced dramatically in recent decades. Satellite radar interferometry, or INSAR, allows scientists to detect ground deformation of only a few millimetres from orbit, mapping strain across continents. GPS networks anchored to bedrock record motion in real time, confirming how much slip is being stored. Ocean bottom seismometers and pressure gauges extend this coverage offshore, into the heart of subduction zones. In Cascadia, acoustic GPS devices placed on the sea floor show the plates locked almost completely. In Nankai, undersea networks record slow slip events that creep silently without human perception but they also confirm that the shallow interface remains stubbornly stuck. In California, GPS stations track steady build-up along the San Andreas, with parts of the fault creeping but others grinding to a halt. In the Philippines, the gaps in data are almost as alarming as the data itself. The absence of clear evidence is not comfort, it is uncertainty. Beyond direct measurement, computer models have become essential to modern seismology. Dynamic rupture simulations replicate how faults might break once triggered, showing whether rupture will stall or cascade across segments. In Japan, models of the Nankai system suggest the possibility of a sequence of earthquakes, with one magnitude 8 followed by another within a year, just as in the 19th century. In California, scenarios tested by the Southern California Earthquake Center simulate shaking across urban corridors demonstrating how a rupture from the Salton Sea to San Bernardino could propagate into Los Angeles, toppling freeways and shattering lifelines. In Cascadia, simulations combine rupture models with tsunami propagation, showing waves racing across the Pacific and striking shores in Hawaii, Japan and beyond. And in the Philippines, Fivox has modeled tsunami arrival times under multiple trench rupture scenarios with the consistent conclusion that evacuation time is desperately short. Even with such tools, prediction remains elusive. Scientists can calculate probabilities, estimate recurrence intervals, and measure strain accumulation, but the exact moment of rupture cannot be foreseen. The Earth does not run on a schedule humans can predict. Instead, it operates as a chaotic system where stress redistributes in complex ways 
and one quake can advance or delay the next. The Sargeng fault rupture in Myanmar earlier this year illustrated this uncertainty with brutal clarity. Its 500-kilometer break defied models that assumed shorter ruptures. That surprise serves as a warning. The next great quake in Cascadia, California, Japan or the Philippines may not conform to the scenarios scientists have painstakingly prepared. The consequences of these eventual ruptures go beyond human casualties. Global trade routes cross the Pacific, with ports in Los Angeles, Seattle, Yokohama and Manila forming critical hubs. A Cascadia quake could cripple West Coast ports for months, disrupting supply chains worldwide. A Nankai rupture could paralyze Japan's industrial heartland, sending shockwaves through the global economy. A major Philippine trench tsunami could devastate Manila and disrupt maritime routes through the South China Sea. Even the San Andreas, though not generating tsunamis, could devastate California's economy, which is among the largest in the world. The ripple effects would not be regional, but global. What science makes clear is that silence is not safety. Strain does not vanish. Plates grind forward inexorably, two to three centimetres each year on the San Andreas, ten to fifteen millimetres on the Philippine Trench, up to twenty millimetres in parts of Cascadia. These may sound like trivial amounts, but multiplied by centuries, they add up to metres of stored displacement, enough to fuel the largest earthquakes on record. When faults are locked, that motion has only one outlet, rupture. Consider the hourglass analogy. Each year, grains of sand fall, accumulating strain. We can measure the sand, model how much has piled up, and estimate when the glass might tip, but the precise moment remains hidden. That is where humanity stands now, watching four giant hourglasses filling in silence, knowing they must tip, but powerless to say when. The scenarios are sobering. A Cascadia rupture would combine shaking and tsunami into a double disaster, leveling coastal towns and flooding them within minutes. A southern San Andreas rupture could unleash minutes of relentless shaking, toppling skyscrapers and cutting lifelines across Los Angeles. An Ankai rupture could arrive in pairs, with one magnitude eight quake followed by another, striking Japan in quick succession. A Philippine trench rupture could bring a wall of water onto coastal communities in less time than it takes to read these words. Each possibility is real, each outcome devastating. The question posed at the beginning remains unanswered. Which of Earth's giants will break first? Will it be Cascadia, overdue by centuries, San Andreas, unpredictable and heavily stressed, Nankai with the highest statistical probabilities, or the Philippine Trench, the blind spot where silence hides secrets? Science cannot yet say. The only certainty is that they will break. The Earth does not stop moving. Its plates grind forward, indifferent to human schedules, forcing us to live in their shadow. That knowledge demands humility and preparation. Disaster plans often look backward, basing scenarios on past events. But faults do not respect precedent. The next rupture may last longer, span farther, or trigger cascading failures never before seen. Humanity must imagine not only what has happened, but what could happen, however unlikely, because the unlikely is inevitable when enough time passes. If this deep dive helped you grasp the stakes of these looming seismic giants, don't let the knowledge stop here. Share it with others, spark conversations, and build awareness that could save lives when the Earth's silence finally breaks. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that hype button to help this video be recommended to more viewers who need to be informed and prepared for what's coming.